In the realm of human experience, few stories are as compelling and thought-provoking as those involving near-death experiences. Dr. Mary Neal's experience is a profound testimony to this enigmatic phenomenon. An orthopedic surgeon by profession, Dr. Neal embarked on a kayaking adventure in Chile that culminated in an extraordinary near-death experience, offering her insights into the afterlife and a forewarning about her son's untimely death. We will delve into the intricate details of her journey, exploring the realms of life, death, and the ethereal connections that bind them. Welcome to As Told by Bells, where mysteries unfold, the bizarre becomes reality, and strange stories come to life. I'm Bells, your guide into the world of the unexplained. Every Sunday, we'll delve into unsolved mysteries that continue to baffle and tales so bizarre you won't believe they actually happened. To stay in the loop with every captivating story, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and ring that notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single episode of these extraordinary stories we're about to unravel. Now let the storytelling begin. Dr. Neil resided in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. She and her husband, who is also an orthopedic spine surgeon, had been married for 26 years. Together, they had four children, each of whom was a competitive cross-country skier. To celebrate her husband's birthday, Dr. Neil organized a surprise trip, a week of kayaking in Chile. On January 14, 1999, Dr. Mary Neal and a group of friends ventured into the remote waters of Chile's Foy River, known for its demanding rapids and stunning natural beauty. This expedition was not merely a pursuit of adventure, but also a deep dive into the embrace of nature's untamed essence. The group, equipped with years of kayaking expertise and a profound respect for the river's powers, embarked on this journey with anticipation and preparedness. It was an incredible week filled with the enjoyment of local culture, delicious food, and quality time with friends. This was their final day of kayaking, they planned to tackle a challenging section of the river known for its significant waterfalls and drops ranging from 10 to 15 feet. However, that morning, her husband experienced severe back pain and decided against joining them on the river. As they embarked on the river, something felt off. Initially, Dr. Neil dismissed it as nerves, but the feeling of unease persisted as they navigated the waters. It didn't feel like things were clicking into place as they usually did. When they approached the first major drop, the sight that met her was daunting. A seemingly bottomless pit of churning water without a visible safe exit. Upon descending the waterfall, the front of her kayak got trapped in the rocks, submerging Dr. Neil and the boat under eight to 10 feet of water. She started to do the things that would free her from the boat, but the force of the current had her body pressed to the front deck of the boat. Despite the frantic efforts of her companions, the kayak remained pinned, trapping her beneath the water's surface. Time became a nebulous concept as minutes stretched into eternity, with Dr. Neil's struggle culminating in a loss of consciousness her life hanging in a delicate balance between the earthly and the beyond. At this point, time became very important because it determined whether they were trying to rescue someone or whether they were trying to recover her body. Dr. Neil's experience on what turned out to be her near-death adventure was harrowing. She could feel her knees breaking and the ligaments and tissue tearing. She reached a point where she believed she was going to die recognizing that she had been submerged underwater for too long. In that moment of extreme peril, she surrendered her attempts to dictate the outcome, placing her fate entirely in the hands of a higher power. She earnestly prayed, your will will be done, relinquishing all control. It was right after this act of surrender that Dr. Neil felt an overwhelming and tangible sensation of being held, 
comforted and reassured. She felt a profound peace, knowing that everything would be okay, whether she survived or not, and believed that her husband and children would be fine without her. Yet, intriguingly, another part of her mind was still active, analytically observing the situation and noting the surreal nature of her experience, thinking, wow, this is really, really strange. This duality of thought reflects the complex nature of human consciousness, especially in extreme situations. At this point, she encountered a series of profound and transformative events that shaped her understanding of life and the afterlife. Upon losing consciousness under the water, Dr. Neil described being pulled out of her physical body and entering an otherworldly realm that was distinctly separate from our familiar earthly existence. She felt her spirit peeling away from her body, sort of like peeling apart two pieces of tape, and she felt her spirit break free. She rose up and out of the water and was immediately greeted by beings of light, which she perceived as angels or spirit guides. These beings exuded an overwhelming sense of love and warmth, enveloping her in a feeling of unconditional acceptance and peace. She did not recognize these beings as individuals she had known in her earthly life, but she felt a deep connection to them as if they had been important to her in ways beyond her earthly comprehension. These beings started taking her towards a vibrant path of all-encompassing light that was so beautiful, which many interpret as a representation of the divine or heavenly realm. While she was going down this path, she was simultaneously looking back at the river. When she saw her body, she said that was the first time that she actually knew she was dead. Her experience in this place was marked by an intense feeling of homecoming, a profound sense of belonging that transcended any earthly experience. During her time in this spiritual realm, Dr. Neil had an encounter with a divine presence, which she understood to be God. This was not a verbal communication, but rather an exchange of pure knowledge and insight. She received profound revelations about the nature of the universe, the interconnectedness of all beings, and the boundless scope of divine love. These insights were conveyed directly to her consciousness, imparting a deep understanding that transcended human language. One of the most significant aspects of Dr. Neil's near-death experience was receiving knowledge about her son's future death. This information was not given in the form of a warning or something that could be altered, but rather as an insight into a predetermined event that would have a profound impact on her life. The spiritual beings conveyed this information with a sense of inevitability and purpose, emphasizing that while her son's death would be a source of immense grief, it would also be intertwined with a deeper understanding and acceptance facilitated by her experience in this heavenly realm. The beings told Dr. Neil that it was not her time to stay and that she had to return to her physical body to continue her work on earth. They indicated that she had specific tasks and purposes yet to fulfill, one of which involved sharing her near-death experience with others to provide insight, and the other had to do with her husband's health. Throughout her experience, Dr. Neil was imbued with a profound sense of understanding, peace, and a deepened perception of life's interconnectedness and divine love. They eventually took her back down the path and she literally sat down in her body. Her return to her physical body marked the end of her near-death experience, but the insights and revelations she received continued to shape her life offering a unique perspective on the nature of existence and the afterlife. When Dr. Neil returned to her physical body after her near-death experience, the transition marked a profound shift from the ethereal realm of peace and divine presence back to the tangible physical world. 
Her reawakening to bodily life was accompanied by a mix of emotions and sensations, reflecting the stark contrast between her spiritual journey and her physical reality. Upon regaining consciousness in her physical body, Dr. Neil found herself back in the challenging and painful confines of the human form. She had been submerged and trapped underwater, which led to significant physical trauma. Despite the serene and transformative experience she just had on the gong, returning to her body meant facing the immediate consequences of her accident. Dr. Neil experienced a profound sense of disorientation and shock as she transitioned from the otherworldly realm back to the riverbank. The peace and love she felt during her near-death experience were now juxtaposed with the physical pain and the urgent concern of her companions who were resuscitating her. Her medical knowledge as a physician perhaps gave her a unique perspective on her physical state, understanding the gravity of her condition and the potential implications of her prolonged submersion. After her resuscitation, Dr. Neil required significant medical attention. She was hospitalized for more than a month, undergoing multiple operations to address the injuries sustained during the kayaking accident. Her recovery in the hospital was a time of physical healing, but also of deep personal reflection as she processed the profound insights and experiences she had gained during her near-death experience. Despite the physical pain and the arduous journey of recovery, Dr. Neil felt a changed perspective on life. She reported a heightened sense of purpose and an unwavering conviction in the reality and significance of her experience beyond the physical realm. This newfound perspective influenced her approach to the recovery process, imbuing her with a sense of gratitude and a renewed commitment to her life's path and the task she felt called to pursue following her experience. Remarkably, Dr. Neil did not suffer any brain damage, which is often a concern with incidents involving prolonged oxygen deprivation. This absence of neurological impairment was particularly noteworthy given the length of time she had been underwater, and she considered it a miraculous aspect of her survival and recovery. Her return to life was marked by a complex interplay of physical pain, medical recovery, and profound spiritual and psychological transformation. Her hospitalization was a time of healing, reflection, and integration of the extraordinary insights she had gained during her near-death experience, shaping her subsequent life and work in significant ways. Dr. Mary Neal's anticipation of her son Willie's death was profound. This revelation was a troubling aspect of her journey beyond, leaving her with the daunting knowledge of a future tragedy. Despite the heavy burden of this knowledge, Dr. Neal chose to keep this information largely to herself for a considerable period. She struggled with the decision of whether to share this forewarning with her family, especially with her husband. Eventually, as Willie's 18th birthday approached, Dr. Neal felt compelled to share this revelation with her husband feeling that it was unfair to keep him in the dark about something so significant. On June 21st, 2009, Willie and a friend were enjoying a day of roller skating. They decided to take a break at a scenic overlook, pausing to take in the stunning view of a river valley below. It was during this peaceful moment that tragedy struck. Distracted by his cell phone, a driver veered off course, hitting Willie. His friend, who was with him, witnessed the heartbreaking incident, later recounting how they had just admired the view, with Willie commenting on the beauty of the scene, saying, wouldn't this be an incredible last sight if you never could see anything else? Tragically, just about 30 seconds after that poignant reflection, Willie was struck by the car and killed instantly. Dr. Neil learned of her son's death through a phone call, 
a moment that brought her face to face with the devastating reality she had been dreading since her near-death experience. Despite her foreknowledge, the news of Willie's death was a profound shock and an immensely painful reality to confront. She experienced the full breath of grief, mourning the loss of her son with the intense sorrow and heartache that any parent would feel at such a loss. However, her experience also provided her with a unique perspective on death and the afterlife, which influenced her grieving process. The knowledge and insight she gained during her near-death experience, particularly her encounters with the divine and her understanding of an afterlife, offered her a framework of hope and faith amidst her grief. She believed that death was not the end and that she would be reunited with Willie in the afterlife. Dr. Neal's anticipation of her son Willie's death and her subsequent experience of his passing were deeply interwoven with her near-death experience. While she faced the universal pain of losing a child, her unique foreknowledge and spiritual insights provided a distinct context through which she navigated her grief and mourning. Dr. Mary Neal's journey from the brink of death to the threshold of the divine offers a compelling exploration of the human spirit's resilience and the profound mysteries that lie beyond our mortal comprehension. Her experience serves as a testament to the unseen threads that weave the tapestry of our existence, inviting us to ponder the ineffable and embrace the journey of life with an enlightened heart and an open mind. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the mysteries of the unexplained. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on every captivating story we uncover. Until next time, keep your eyes open and your mind curious. Stay tuned for more stories from As Told by Bells.